You know, for the past year, it's been a really, really rough go of it for wrestling fans in terms of wrestling deaths. You know, there are days that I don't want to go on social media or go on any wrestling website. You know, sometimes I get that fear it's been too long since somebody has passed away far too young or in an unfortunate circumstance and is today going to be the day. And sometimes, frankly, that's the thought process that I have. And you just see so many people that have been involved with the wrestling business for all these years that just pass away way too soon for a variety of reasons. Now, many, I'm sure, will blame the wrestling business, but, you know, sometimes things happen, and sometimes people have to be accountable for their own decisions and their own choices that they make in their lifetime. Just because the life of a wrestler, especially in the past, was very tough and required a lot of travel on the road and so on and so forth, it doesn't provide a justification for you know, abusing and using drugs to excess and not taking care of your body, not taking care of yourself. You know, it's kind of one of those things at the end of the day. Unfortunately, people have to take responsibility. And, you know, for a lot of those people that especially partied hard and drugged it up hard and drank hard, at some point in time, those chickens always seem to come home to roost. But back to the whole point of the matter, you know, this past year, we've seen Dusty Rhodes pass away. Roddy Roddy Piper passed away. Just recently, from a wrestling standpoint, Axel Rotten passed away. And then very recently, Balls Mahoney passed away. And there's always that thing that talks about uh, deaths seem to come in threes. Well, in a very short time, we've seen Axel Rotten pass, Balls Mahoney pass, and now, unfortunately, come Wednesday, apparently, China has passed away. And, you know, this is... Unfortunately, something that I think a lot of people thought might happen or was a possibility, it seemed like in recent years, China had really kind of been on a downward path, a downward spiral. And it's unfortunate because you think sometimes that maybe the support system wasn't there for that individual, that the friends that are supposed to be friends maybe weren't good enough friends and didn't do enough to help the person. But at the same point in time, the person has to be responsible for their own decisions, their own choices, their own actions. And, you know, ultimately you choose to do what you do. And to me, it's very tragic and it's very sad to see somebody like China be gone at the age of, what is it, 45? I mean, she got to live some life, sure, but there was still plenty of life you would think left to live. And now it's been snatched away and it's cruel and it's unfortunate. And to me... I just wanted to come on here and pay my respects to China because I think China for many years, for a variety of reasons that we all know, via, via um, the certain types of videos that she did, the certain types of substances that she did, the different things that she would do and in particular say, especially in the last few years of her life, uh, the fact that she was a bigger, more masculine looking woman. And she was a woman in the wrestling business itself. And on top of that, she looked like that. You know, she was always easy to be a punching bag. And she, it was always easy to make fun of her, to mock her, to knock her, in some ways, frankly, disrespect her. And it's very unfortunate and it's very sad. And I know I've been a party to that at some point in time over the years and others have as well. And then and some of that is a part of life. But some of that, frankly, is shame on me. And shame on you, too. Because I think sometimes what gets lost in the bigger picture is just how important, pivotal, and significant of a wrestler China was and how much she actually did mean and how much of a groundbreaking entertainer, performer, athlete she was and how important in the grand scheme of things for women in particular in that business she was and how in some ways, especially during her career, she could be somebody that a lot of people looked up to. A lot of people love China. It's been fascinating to me over the past couple of days after the announcement of her passing and then obviously with the announcement of Prince's passing, everybody's talking about that. But you'd be surprised how many people would, were talking to me over the past couple of days about China's passing and talking about that and discussing it and you know talking about how much they loved China and admired China and enjoyed watching her during her WWF, WWE career. You'd be surprised how many people that you didn't think watched wrestling or cared about wrestling or knew wrestling know about China 
and you know felt remorse and felt sad that she had passed. They were shocked by the news. Some people saddened by the news. And you know, if anything, it was almost a little bit heartwarming because over the years I've felt like there's been that in part this is the WWE's fault, the WWE's guilt and shoulder or burden to shoulder and their blame is that they've done what they could to kind of minimize her legacy and try to minimize her as a performer and try to sit there and kick her off to the side, not inducting her into the WWE Hall of Fame, not re referencing her as a, the important part of Degeneration X that she was back in the late 90s, not talking about how groundbreaking of an athlete and performer she was for that company during that time, which she was. They'll talk about this woman or that woman because they were blonde or they had big tits or they had a nice ass. But it was China that was the bigger star. It was China that was the bigger deal. It was China that was one of the biggest stars during arguably the hottest era in the history of the wrestling business and in particular the history of the WWF slash WWE. You know, when I think of China, you know, I sit there and think about somebody that did a lot. And frankly, could have done a lot more. You know, this was somebody, uh, former women's champion, former intercontinental champion. And people loved it. They ate it up. She was believable. I mean, you looked at China and you said, you know, this was a bad lady. This was a bad woman. You know, she could mess some dudes up. It was legitimate. And, you know, it was amazing to me when you talk about, in particular, 1997 in the history of the WWE. I always love talking about that year. Because you can see such a stark change in contrast in so many things in terms of the characters and the presentation of the product. From the 97 Royal Rumble to the point in time you get to Survivor Series 97 and afterwards. There was so much change, growth, development, improvement in the overall product, presentation, characters, you name it. It's one of my favorite years in the history of the WWE for that reason and that reason alone. You could see more growth in potential in that year than maybe any year in history. And one of those key figures in that was China. There's no question about it. Because when she came on board and they brought her in as part of DX, I mean, she was different. You took note of her. Like, if you sat there and you had a group of the women in the history of the business and you had, like, Miss Elizabeth and Sensational Sherry and you had... Stacy Keebler and Tori Wilson, Trish Stratus and Lita, they had things that were unique about them. But then you put China in that group, and she just stands out to a whole different level. And like I said, over the years, I think it's been uh, a large part the fault of the WWE. And people don't give her the credit, the due, the respect that she deserves. I know people in the business have had their, their chirps and they've said their things about it. But sometimes to me, that's frankly just petty, childish jealousy because they couldn't draw as much money as her. They couldn't make as much money as her. And they weren't as over, weren't as big as her. And that's the way I look at it. Because when you talk about the Attitude Era, to me, you talk about the biggest stars. It was Vince McMahon, number one, and I always stand by that because everything funneled off of him. Then you had Austin, Rock, and whatever order you want to put him. Then you had that next tier of people, the guys like The Undertaker and Mankind McFoley. You had Kane. You had Benoit, not Benoit, excuse me, Angle, Jericho. Um, you had guys in that group, Big Show. And China, to me, was always right in that mix. China, to me, was almost as much of a pivotal player as any of those others because you had versatility in what you could do with her. You could utilize her as a manager. You can utilize her as a hired hit man or hit woman, if you will. You could sit there and put her into a feud with women. You could sit there and put her into a feud with men, and it could actually result in a payoff in the ring in terms of a match. You know, and I think people forget that sometimes because we want to talk about all the other stuff. We want to talk about the drugs. We want to talk about the relationship with X-Pac, some of the things she said later on in life, the porn and all of this and all of that. And how she looked in her later years, you know, we forget just how good she was, and frankly, just how important she was. You know, people will remember Sable doing Playboy, but China got Playboy too. Think about that, China, a woman like her that looked like her, and did what she did, got a Playboy cover. Think about that for a second. I mean, that's insane. I mean, she was incredibly over. I don't care what anybody says. She was a big star, no matter what anybody says to me. 
and she was one of the most popular women, if not arguably, alongside maybe Trish Stratus, the most popular woman in the history of WWE. I'll put her legacy, I'll put her career up against just about any woman in that company and in the history of the wrestling business. This is not some ancillary bit player that passed away. Sure, it's been many years, but she was a big player and she was a big deal. And it hasn't been a surprise to me over the past couple of days to see the outpouring of love and support and the remorse and the remembrances for her. Because I think people start to realize and they remember and it comes back to them how much she did matter and how much they did enjoy her and how much they did like her and how unique and different she was. And I always respected China for as much as anything else that she seemed to me, seemed to me at least from the outside looking in, comfortable in her own skin and not afraid to be different, not afraid to be unique. Let's face it, at the end of the day, a lot of people would look at a woman like her that lifted weights like her, that looked like her, and automatically assume that she's some masculine, butch, lesbian, da 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 And that's not the case at all. It was like a, a contrast to the nth degree. She was like the ultimate contradiction in a lot of ways. She was incredibly into physical fitness, but then she was doing all these drugs and bad things. She looked one way, but she was incredibly feminine. You know, it was, it was so many contradictions and, you know, um, changes from what you perceive versus what the reality actually was. I always respect her, respected her a lot because she wasn't afraid to be who she was. And that is something that takes a tremendous amount of courage in this world to do, no matter what uh, walk of life you have, no matter who you are. It can take a tremendous amount of courage to be yourself. It takes no courage to be somebody else. It takes no guts, no balls, no cojones, uh, no fortitude to pretend to be somebody else. The most difficult thing you could be is happy in your own skin. The most difficult thing you could be is confident in yourself. The toughest thing to be, again, is comfortable in your own shoes. And, you know, China knew who she was, understood what she was, and embraced it didn't run from it, didn't hide from it, and in fact tried to change some of the perceptions that came along with the perception of who and what she was based off of how she looked and what people thought that meant based off of how she looked. A tremendous amount of respect for her. Now, people I don't have respect for are those like Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. And you can't imagine how offended I was, or just pissed off I was, I guess would be the greater word, when I see one of the first people with the WWE that actually tweeted anything about China was Stephanie McMahon. Bitch, I wish you fucking would. Shut the fuck up. You can actually, I think, tangibly point to when Stephanie entered the picture and her and Triple H started messing around and China lost her man. China was never the same. Never the same. Hunter was the love of her life. Paul was the love of her life. And I think everybody in the business, outside of the business, close to them, not as close to them, understand that and know that. And, you know, sometimes that could be incredibly devastating for somebody. And, you know, China, this is, you know, she loses her man. She has the neck injury. WWE doesn't re-sign her after she goes and asks for a ton of money. You know, she's watching as the boss's daughter is sitting there stealing her man away from her. She probably had to look for years at the end of the day, no matter what she was involved with in terms of X-Pac or anybody else. She always looked at Hunter and wondered if that could have been her. Could she have had the daughters with him? Could they have had the happy marriage? Could they have had the happy family? Could they have lived the good life? And you can imagine that was a debilitating and crippling thing for China to have to live with for the last decade and a half of her life. So for Stephanie McMahon to sit there and have the nerve, the gumption, and frankly the balls to sit there and pretend like she cared, you know goddamn good and well that bitch is happy that China is dead. And shame on fucking her. At the end of the day, you won. Whatever that means. You get God. You get to find God all the time. And then you have the nerve to sit there after you stole her, man, and you're going to sit there and talk about sympathy and this and that. Fuck you. And then Triple H, too. You know, I've sat there over the years and called him God and this egomaniac and everything else. You know, But at the end of the day, to me, this is one of these situations where Triple H has always been a bit of a punk puss and been a bitch, frankly. Because at a time where the WWE was inducting 
women like Sonny and yes, even people like Jacqueline Moore into the WWE Hall of Fame, whereas Jacqueline obviously deserved a hell of a lot more than Sonny's slutty ass ever did, we were given lame-ass reasons and excuses and justifications for why China couldn't be in the WWE Hall of Fame. We can put in adulterers like Arnold Schwarzenegger, convicted rapists like Mike Tyson, wife beaters like Stone Cold Steve Austin, and celebrate them to kingdom fucking come, but China's done porn, and that's bad. And I don't want my daughters looking it up and seeing her on the internet. I mean, come on. What a lame-ass excuse. And what a bitch-ass way to punk out and basically say, my wife has the balls in the relationship, she wears the pants, and even though Stephanie's the one that got me, and it's been a decade and a half since I've been involved with China in any way, I'm going to let my wife tell me what the fuck to do. Now, fuck that shit. Shame on Triple H for being such a punk bitch. Shame on Triple H all those years ago for not handling a situation better, handling it like a man should have. And even all these years later, you know, he managed to get Bruno San Martino and Mr. Bob Backlund in the WWE Hall of Fame, done all these different things. You couldn't figure out a way to make that happen because China deserved that moment. That probably would have been one of the highlights of her nut. And for a fan of China like myself from years back and many others, we would have appreciated that moment. We would have enjoyed that moment. And now, to sit there and let's say induct her next year, is going to be similar to finally inducting the Macho Man. It's way too late. It should have happened a long freaking time ago. I'm ashamed for everybody involved for not making it happen. Yes, China was not perfect, and she had her demons, and she had her problems, and she had her struggles, and it seems like ultimately they got the best of her. But who doesn't have their demons or battles or struggles or things they have to overcome? They just ultimately became too much for her. And if anything, Triple H, to me, you know, should look at himself and say maybe he's a little bit responsible for it. At the end of the day, uh, Joni had made her decisions. She made her choices. So she ultimately is the one that is responsible. And I hope, if anything else, that she can find peace um, now, and I hope that she was at peace, and I hope she is at peace, and I hope she did go to a better place where she doesn't have to worry about those demons or those struggles anymore. Um, because, you know, in a lot of ways, they, they dominated, it seemed like, the later years of her life, and they got the best of her. You know, shame on the WWE for years trying to dismiss China's legacy and belittle her and sit there and not pay her the credit or respect that she deserves. Shame on Stephanie McMahon for what she did all those years ago. Shame on Triple H for not only what he did all those years ago, but not bucking up, manning the fuck up, and doing the right thing while China was still around to appreciate it, while China was still around to enjoy it, while China was around where other fans could enjoy it. Everybody involved deserved it, and of course the WWE failed to provide it. It's just really sad. Like I said, when I think of China... Unfortunately, you think about the out-of-the-ring stuff, out-of-the-business stuff. That is a part of her. It is, it is a complicated piece of her life and her legacy. But there's more to it to me. You know, when you talk about this lip service paid to Divas Revolution and doing different things with the Divas, you know, when they were sitting there having people go out there like Sable with handprints printed on her tits and all the girls were wearing thongs and so on and so forth, China was a freaking divas revolution. China was a star. China was a big star. And China deserves far more love and respect and admiration for who she was, the courage that she had, the ability that she had, the success that she had, than she ultimately gets. It's sad to see her go. It's sad again in these type of situations to be a wrestling fan because unfortunately this becomes a very common repeating refrain. Um, another performer that we enjoyed to watch in the past, that their demons got the best of them, their past caught up with them, and they're gone far, far too soon. Like I said, whatever place she was at at the end, I hope she was able to find peace with herself and she was able to finally escape those demons. Because to me, she deserved it. And I hope when people look back on her legacy and her career, I hope now, this is unfortunately what happens sometimes, we start to view people in a different light because they passed. Well, in this particular case, my hope being 
is that when it comes to China, people view her and her career in a more positive light in the way that it should have been viewed all along. Because when it comes back to that era of the business, that 15 years later, we're still waiting to get something like that, something that entertains us like that. You know, China was a big part of that. No matter how much the company, anybody involved with that company or anybody involved with the business tries to tell you otherwise. She was a big deal. She'll be missed and it's unfortunate. And I hope if anything good comes out of this, that maybe somebody out there will see her battles, her struggles, and it will cause them to evaluate their decision making and they'll stop doing it. And I hope also for Joni's standpoint is that if anything else... This will lead to people revisiting her career, revisiting her legacy, and it will get the attention and praise and recognition that she so richly deserves. Rest in peace, China. I hope, I hope you're able to finally find that peace that you were looking for for so many years.